dude, maybe what we should do instead of getting uh getting listeners to send us their phone numbers, we should just get the phone numbers of Game Cola staff so we can call them as it is now uh 7:30 in the morning on a Tuesday. Mhm. And uh wake them up. Yes, wake them up and be like, <laughs> Jeff Day, uh, tell me about Super, what was it, Super Robot Ninja Hago Man Komei version? Yeah, Komei version, wow. Yes. I'm still waiting for Super Ninja Hago Man 4. <laughs> does, does Wikipedia even have, there's no link to it, whoops. Oh no. Ninja, hag, no, Ninja Hago, wait, Robot. Ninja. Super Robot Ninja? Robot Ninja. Ah, oh, okay. If I type it into search, like it gives me the suggested results. And mm-hmm. if I type in Robot uh, Ninja, it suggests Robot Ninja Haggleman 2, but it just re- redirects me to Retro Game Challenge. Man. Hold on. Let me click on the Japanese version because I bet there's a link to the game there. Uh. Not that we that have the really... intro here on game or uh, on YouTube. Ninja Jaja Marukun. Copyright that... 1985 by Gears. I've never heard of that company. Gears. Ninja 19... Jaja Marukun. Is that super? Okay. It is, or no? It is the primary inspiration between Robot and Ninja Haggleman. Hold on a second. Now okay. it's saying this game was made for the Retro Games Challenge, a game where is for the Nintendo DS where all the games were made to look like NES games, but they were new. Really? Really? Is that the point behind Retro Games Challenge? Hold on. Uh, so they made up a bunch of new games designed to look like they were NES games? Hold on, hold on. Uh, Maybe Each this- game is original, but with graphic, sound, and gameplay elements which make it look old or retro. Wow! This actually could be an amazing game. We should have not made fun of it. Wow. Well, I can make I can edit the podcast to make it sound like we thought this was a great idea and make it sound like we actually knew about the game and that maybe we had read the Wikipedia article before making fun of it. Game Informer put it on their list of best games for 2009. Wow. Wow. Reception as of June. Well, yeah, I just said exactly what you just said. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, they're not they're not selling the second one here in the United States. Yeah. How could how hard would it be to localize these games? Cuz if they're supposed to be like NES games, doesn't that mean they have like three words <laughs> to translate? So anyway, anyway, on to our next topic. Not excited for 3D. Okay. I'm not very excited for it either. Yeah. I do like his suggestion of uh, fighting games being controlled by, like, actually doing, like, jumping uppercuts and stuff. I think it would be interesting to see a fighting game. Um, actually, no, I think I mentioned this. It'd be interesting to see if they did, like, with the a fighting game with the DDR controller. DDR. Or an adventure game where you play as the, uh, you play with the Guitar Hero controller. Interesting. I think that's what I said, and they, they actually, like, implemented it in the Back to the Future series, which blew my mind. Do you use the uh, the guitar as you play uh, Johnny Be Good? Is that what happens? That was that was what I was saying in my fake preview of the game, and then in Episode 3, there's a Guitar Hero showdown. You don't actually use the Guitar Hero controller because yeah. of the PC version, no. but... Marty Still, that's one of the challenges, is a guitar showdown. Wow. So, yes, in answer to this, uh, I think it would be cool. Uh, next topic. Uh, cool. Paul, don't pronounce Mario or Chrono again. Mario or Chrono, excuse me. Chrono. So he's the hero of Chrono Trigger? Chrono? Chrono that, Trigger? That the H? I, I don't know. I haven't. There's no H in it. There's no H in Chrono for the name of the character. Because I have here in my notes that it has an H, so I've been mispronouncing his name the whole time. Hold on, let me let me go. Where is it? Chrono. See, when I played the actual game itself, I sort of, again, like with Final Fantasy III, I named the characters after other things. Yeah. No, the the real characters' names. 
Chrono and Chrono Trigger was spelled without the H. Okay, I, I named them after Dragon Ball Z characters because the Dragon Ball Z guy worked on that game. And oh, it's yeah. It's obvious that he was copy-pasting characters. Well, isn't that what he always does? I guess, but I mean... I don't know, I haven't seen any of his other works besides Dragon Ball Z. Uh, no, that's basically all he ever does. Yeah, but I mean, like, oh, oh, so it's the female scientist who creates a time machine. Okay, well, that was season four of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> it's like the time machine. We have monsters from the future, and we have to save the future and the present. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, okay, Paul, don't pronounce Mary or Chrono. Uh, Nathaniel, about your message from Dr. Light. Awesome and overdue. People need to calm down. That was a video on Nathaniel's YouTube, and... Uh, on behalf of Nathaniel, I'll say uh, thank you and you're welcome. Oh, we missed uh, eat in your car and put a reserved seating sign on your passenger's seat. I think that's a very good idea. Yes. Actually, uh, I do have a car now, so I have actually gone through a drive through But I have yet to go through a drive through and then sit and eat in my car. That is actually a good solution. I was just talking about going to my car to eat. I never actually thought about going to a drive through Yeah, and then eating in your car? I packed a lunch, and then I went to my car. Yeah, it was always a, a lunch I had packed ahead of time. Yeah, well, that's the thing is, uh, I think that's what we were discussing originally, but I didn't have a car, so I just mm -hmm. said that I would, like, go to a nearby park, like in the office area. Yeah. Yeah, but kind of the same thing. See, it's unfair, because I know my sister, what she does is all of her friends from work go out to eat together. Yeah. Like, they have lunch together. So, you know, all of them pay for lunch, but nobody from my work wants to come out and hang. Well, yeah, we're going to have to cut that from the podcast. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. But um, nobody from my work um, at the time that we were discussing this is um, – now I'm totally thrown off. Yeah. I'm mixing up my current work with the work at the time of our discussion. Yeah. But nobody from my work actually knew my name or talked to me back then. Oh. So it's just the boss. He was the only one who knew my name. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You're that gray guy, right? Yeah, it was, it was uh, whatever you call it. We had to type up forms. So it's basically you just, sh you just sit down, you just shut up and type forms all day long. It was an Data entry job. Yeah. So I quit. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah, it was for uh, it was for Yes Video, which is the place that transfers VHS tapes to DVD. Wow. Mm -hmm. Why? For people who have like home videos or stuff. Oh, on okay. Their... I was gonna say, yeah, okay, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, that's all. What was the last topic? Can't wait for the next podcast. Can't wait for the next podcast. Well, your wait is over because you are listening to the podcast now. Awesome. Yes. Okay, next one. Next next email. Email number from Sarah of Sarahsville, New York. Uh, hold on, let me get a handle on this one. It has odd grammar. 